Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In previous videos in this series, we've looked at the subject of torque and how we calculate it, and we've also looked at the difference between mass and weight. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can tie those two things together and using the Electrical Machines Kit from Matrix TSL, have a think about how we can use this in order to calculate the torque of a motor, and in particular, this motor here. So we're going to bring the camera in and we're going to have a look at the kit and we're going to use some of those formulas that we've learned in previous videos in order to help us understand this subject. Okay, so we've got our DC motor connected into our dynamometer. And if you remember from a previous video, when this starts to spin, this will try and twist, but obviously there's only so far it can go before it starts to press onto the scale at the front here. So when we power it up, this is going to start pressing down on there and giving us a reading. So we'll power up our control box and this will just give a little initial spin as it powers up. There we go. So we've got that powered on now and we're just gonna turn the scale on. And from this scale, we're gonna get a measurement of the mass that this is measuring. And if you remember in a previous video, we learned how to change that from a reading of mass into a reading of force. So what we may find is that this may just start to drift a little bit from the zero setting that we've got here. It might just go up or down a little bit, but we're not gonna to worry too much about those values. So what we'll do now is we'll start to increase the power supply to the DC motor. So we're gonna start turning that up and you can see that it creates a change in the mass measurement of the scale here. So if we keep this going and we'll just crank this up all the way up to full, max it out and take a reading. So you can see there it's kind of fluctuating a little bit, but it's pretty much around the 110 grams mark. I think, yeah, we'll take that as a nice stable reading there, 110 grams. So, when the power from the power supply is at its maximum value, you can see here that this is hovering around the 110 grams mark. So that's the value we'll take. It's moving around a little bit, but we'll take it at being 110. So what we need to do now is take that value of mass and put it into our calculation so we can figure out what the total torque being generated by this DC motor is. And again, this is going to be really helpful when it comes to analysing the performance and behaviour of this motor when it's put under varying loads. So let's do that calculation now. So let's draw together all the information that we need to figure out what the torque of the motor was when it was powered up on full there. So what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna write down the information we already know. So we know already that the mass that was registered on the scale, so M for mass was equal to 110 grams. So we had that value as a reading of the mass. Now, in this question, we're hoping to find the torque. So we're trying to find out what torque is. So there's that Greek letter tau. That's what we're trying to figure out what the value is gonna be. And if you remember, that is measured in Newton meters. So we're trying to figure out what the torque of the motor was in Newton meters. So in order to figure that out, to find the value for torque, I don't know if you can remember the calculation from the previous video, but to figure out what torque is, we said that torque is equal to force times by distance. So if we put that into a mathematical formulae, it looks like this. We can say that tau is equal to force times, we can just put d for distance on that one. Now, at the moment, we don't know what the force is, and we'll talk in a minute about what the distance is in this case. So in order to figure out what force the motor was generating onto the scale here, we need to do a calculation from a previous video again. So if you remember, we said that force is equal to uh, mass times by acceleration. Now we're taking the mass reading from the scale. So we're taking that from the scale, which was 110 grams. And if you remember, what we actually need to do for this is we need to turn that into a reading of kilograms. Yeah, we said that mass is one of those strange aberrations within the SI system. So the easiest way to do that, we can either divide it by a thousand or, and I'll show you how to do this on the calculator in a minute, we can put in times 10 to the power of minus three. So I'll be doing a video on multiples and submultiples, so look out for that. But at the moment, we can just view that as being times 10 to the minus three. And that actually means 
divide by a thousand, it means the same thing, but it's really easy to put that into your calculator in just one hit. And then we need to times this by the acceleration. Now bear in mind, we're getting our force reading from the scale from the motor rig. So what that means is that this acceleration actually has nothing to do with the motor. It's not the acceleration of the motor or anything like that. It is the kind of mathematical constant that that scale relies upon to take a force reading and turn it into a mass reading. And that is the force of gravity on Earth, which we can also treat as an acceleration. Again, watch a previous video if you don't know where these numbers are coming from. But that value on Earth is 9.8. One. So we're just going to take the value that we measured from the scale and times it by 9.81, which is the value of acceleration of the gravitational pull of Earth, if you like. So we'll put that into our calculator nice and simply. So we'll just grab the calculator and do that. So we'll just put this into the calculator and I'll show you how to do that. So you simply do 110 and then down at the bottom you've got this times 10 to the x button. And if you press that it puts in kind of like a small times 10 and that means times 10 to the power of. Whatever the next number you put in it treats as the power that you've got up here. So we can just put in here minus 3 and that is effectively saying 0.11 is probably the easiest way of expressing it. And then we're going to times that by 9.81. If this is a little bit confusing to you and you've not seen this before, I will do a video on this. Uh, but just bear in mind that actually this is a really kind of helpful mathematical tool, especially if you're going on to study at higher levels. And also actually even at kind of level 2 and level 3 electrical science, you might just get asked a question that is purely about that. So look out for a video on that in the near future. So we'll do that calculation and it comes out at 1.0791. So we've got a force reading of 1.0791. So that's 1.0791. And bear in mind that that is a measurement of force, so that is measured in Newtons. So we've got 1.0791 Newtons. So that's really helpful because it gives us the number that we can now put into our torque calculation. So we've got a value of 1.0791 newtons. So there's our force measurement that we can put in here, 1.0791. And we're going to times it by the distance from the axis. Now from the dynamometer, that is 0.04 meters, which is actually four centimeters. But we're going to times that by 0.04. So 1.0791 times by 0.04, again we'll just stick that into the calculator, 1.0791 and times that by 0.04 and that's going to give us an answer of 0.043, we'll round that off to three decimal places, yeah, so that's 0.0. 43 and bear in mind here we've got newtons and meters so the unit that we've found there is newton meters so in other words this motor is producing a torque of 0.043 newton meters so that's what we're looking at there that's how we carry out the torque calculation for this particular motor we figure out what uh, force it's exerting. We've done that by taking the mass measurement from the scale and converting it into a force reading. And then we times that by the distance from the axis of rotation. So in this case, it's four centimeters or 0.04 meters. And when we do that, we find that this motor, once we round this off, is creating a torque of 0.043 Newton meters. So that's going to be really helpful in the future when we start to analyse the performance of the motor in a bit more detail and of different motors in a bit more detail as well. So we just turned the kind of power supply up to maximum and just took the torque reading from there. But what we can then do is we can start to load the motor up by putting it under different kind of resistances, uh, how hard it has to work to turn. And because of that, we will then see what happens to our torque values and also combine that with how it affects the speed of the motor as well. So that's going to help us to understand the way that motors perform when we connect them up to loads and when we vary the power supply to them. So from this video, just take away that this is how we perform the calculation to figure out the torque for this particular motor. And all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.